Hello and welcome, my name is Robin Nichols, and in this class you're going to learn all there is to know about getting the best from Photoshop Elements. One of the first things you'll learn in the Photoshop Elements class is how to process RAW files. RAW files are about four or five times larger than a JPEG file, and as you see here, when you look at them in Photoshop Elements, they can be very underwhelming, but with a few tweaks using the contrast, the highlight, the exposure, the shadow, and maybe the whites and the black sliders, you can make your pictures look a million dollars. And don't forget to add a little bit of clarity maybe at the end and also tweak the vibrance and your picture will literally pop off the page. Besides having fun with, say, your sequence shots, Photoshop Elements is really good at serious photo editing. And I'll show you in a number of tutorials how we can get some amazing results using color conversions, special effects, filter effects, and of course, converting color to black and white for some gorgeous infrared or multicolor toned and tinted special effects. Photoshop Elements contains some amazingly professional retouching tools, so I teach my students how to retouch just simple family portraits, removing the dust, the scratches, and even major creases. We can even persuade the FBI to leave the force and join the police uh, with some clever editing. If you're ever traveling and you find that the street scenes are a little bit crowded, we can paint people out. We can even improve the color and the contrast, and then maybe even add some figures should you wish. When you're around and about, you'll always find people get in the background so you can paint them out. I'll show you again. People get in the background of your photos so that we can replace them and paint them out and makes the composition a lot neater. And then we can replace skies. We can replace buildings. We can replace skies with twigs or twigs with skies to simplify images. In this case of a martial eagle, uh, I've removed all the twigs to make the image a little bit stronger. Most of us these days travel. Some of us travel extensively and we visit the most beautiful places on earth. The problem there, of course, is if we take one or two or three pictures, it's simply not enough to represent the beauty of the location we're visiting. So it's a really great idea to shoot a panorama. We can shoot three or four or five sections vertically while we're there, and we can then use Photoshop Elements to stitch it together. And I love teaching people how to use Photo Merge. Its job is solely for stitching images together. Don't forget, you can do vertical panoramas as well as horizontal panoramas. Panoramas are fantastic for you're making a digital photo book because they make absolutely amazing double page spreads. I also show students how to create amazing visual anomalies by taking a single frame and flipping it and duplicating using the power of layers in Photoshop Elements to create these wow looking effects. Another technique I like to show students how to do is called jigsaw panorama. This is where you set your camera to a low resolution file size and you shoot in rows and decks. So you may shoot, in this example, 38 different frames in order to create a multi-image panorama. Photoshop Elements is not just for fixing up photos. It can also be used as a design tool. In one exercise, I show my students how to create impressive looking business cards that can, of course, be printed on an inkjet printer at home and used in any practical application. And once students feel more at home with the basic photo editing techniques in Photoshop Elements, we look at some of the more specialized special effects functions such as filters, drop shadows, bevels, layers, adjustment layers, and even blend modes to give you an all-round understanding of this very capable photo editing tool.